need a dirty woman. Ooh, you dirty girl. Bang, 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 meow. Welcome, ladies and germs. I think today is going to be the... Oh, dog's barking. Somebody at the door? Ding dong! Who's that at the door? All right, anyway. So today is the premiere episode of Let's Build. And today we're building a guitar effects pedal. Good times. What we're going to build today is a Mad Bean Pedals Current Lover, which is a clone of the very famous Electro Harmonics Electric Electro Harmonics. How did I pronounce that? Electro Harmonics Electric Mistress. There's a tongue twister for you. Since this is the first let's build of a, a effects pedal, I probably should have picked something simpler, like a uh, well, not that. Uh, not that either. Not that. Well, I don't have anything simple, so I'm just going to dive in with both feet. Hang on for the ride. Maybe you'll learn something. Um, as always, Tone Priest recommends that nobody work on any kind of electrical device ever for any reason. Because you'll kill yourself. Um, even though this isn't an amplifier with, you know, giant capacitors in it that your sole purpose in life is to kill people. Um, low voltage, but, um, you know, go check out Electro Boom's channel. He's got like 30 million subscribers, so I'm sure you've all seen one of his videos. And, you know, even if 9 volts, you know, short circuit can cause a fire, burn the house down, you know, cause property damage, destroy your porcelain knickknack collection. What I'm going to do is, of course I'm going to lay, lay her down a little bit because in the event I use a little bit too much force, I don't want to accidentally knock her over. And, uh, well, this is just the world we live in, so until every lawyer in the world retires or people accept personal responsibility, you will not be allowed to have fun. What? What? <laughs> like I'm doing here. Anyway, so... Uh, this particular PCB I bought from Mad Bean Pedals. Uh, this is my first build with one of their PCBs. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Uh, I have also built pedals with, um, from pedalpcb.com and what's the other one? Tone Pad, which you can purchase from Mad Bear Electronics. Um, those are very good. The Tone Pad ones, the circuit board's on as nice. The, uh, where's my pointer? little pads here are just kind of like silk screened on or I don't know how they do it but did this one you can see in like the uh, pedal PCB ones the, where you stick all the components the uh, having a brain fart whatever this, this is called the little hole here uh, goes all the way through the board you know and the traces are sandwiched in between the plastic so these are robust the tone pad ones I've had no problems with them other than Sometimes if you're not super careful with your soldering or if you need to desolder the, the pad can lift off and you know that opens a whole can of beans which we don't want that we want mad beans Are you centered sorry about the camera today Get your on Mr. Tripod. You can't see the viewfinder. You know. A bass player. Ask Glenn Fricker about that. And what should come as no surprise to anybody, it got a lot of hate comments from those cheap bastards, the bass players. Alright, so we purchased our current lover PCB. Next thing to do, print out the documents that come with it. And here we have a picture of the PCB. Not drawn, not to scale. We have some traces of the path the current takes, I guess. I don't know, I'm gonna use that part. We have BOM, which stands for Bill of Materials. Shows you all the resistors you're gonna need, all the capacitors you're gonna need, diodes. Q stands for transistor, IC or uh, integrated circuits. Um, switch, we get a filter switch, double pull, double throw. Got some trimmers. Um, they're sort of like potentiometers, but different. You'll see when we get there. And pots. 
I know I bought some pots specifically for this pedal. This appears to be them. I got a one meg. Well, maybe it's for something else. You know, one meg. So, whatever. I got shit in stock. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Shopping list. What, what the hell? This looks exactly the same as the bill of materials. Oh, well, it differentiates, you know, your resistors, what kind you want. You want car? You can use carbon or metal film. I like the metal films. Um, what else we got? Capacitors. You want ceramic or the film, or like electrolytic. The uh, electrolytic versus the uh, the film or the poly or the box style ones, that makes a difference. And blah, blah, blah. Whatever, we'll figure it out. We have the schematic. That's how the circuit works. Very interesting. Uh, you would think a little device like this, you know, would be less complicated than your average vintage amplifier, but I assure you it is not. This is... A much more complicated electrical device than, you know, a tweed basement, for sure. And it is probably the uh, most influential rock and roll amp of all times. Let's go. And then, uh, Uses a lot of transistors. Uh, let's see if we can find one in here. Here's one, Q1. Um, transistors uh, replaced vacuum tubes in most applications and they run on the very same, very similar principles as a base collector and an emitter. And that would be similar to a vacuum tube screen um, plate and cathode. Plenty of information about that on the interweb. We have the drill template. I never use this. I just kind of do it willy-nilly. Um, I'm more function over form. So I'm not building these to sell or anything. I just build them for my own entertainment. We have another drill template. In case you screw up the first one. In case you screw up the second one. Uh, the wiring guide for the off-board stuff, your um, double pull, double throw switch, which I have a selection somewhere, 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 um, I hope I have switches or this is going to be a short video. Where the hell are they? Did I move them? we go switch so this is double throw so on off or up down triple pole so the middle one is the common and when you click once this common will be connected to the guy on top separately the middle guy connected to the top separately middle guy to the top click it again and then it goes to the bottom middle to bottom separately middle bottom middle bottom you get it Click, 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 click. I think I bought some new Gorva ones that when you click it, it doesn't quite make as loud of a click. Not that you can hear that when your guitar is on 11. Yeah. The numbers all go to 11. But they're nice. Um, input output jack and your 9 volt power. I don't mess around with batteries, so if you want to learn how to install a battery in this stuff, uh, go somewhere else. Uh, wiring guide number two. Back loop, we won't be messing with that, I don't think. Uh, more blah, blah, blah. Voltages. Oh, yeah, I have a whore troubleshooting, so I think for this particular pedal with the trimmers, we're actually going to have to get in there with the multimeter and set some stuff, set some voltages, so we'll get there when we get there, but this would be the first time I've had to do this. Uh, most pedals, like your, uh, if you want to build a tube screamer, College chicks. Oh. Or, uh, whatchamacallit, Patriot friggin' Brian May Screamer. <laughs> um, they're a lot simpler. You can just set it and forget it and it goes. Um, more blah blah blah. There you go, want to read it, there you go. Pause the screen. Get a picture calibrating, yeah, that's what I was just talking about. We're gonna need to calibrate this, so this will be fun. Be a new experience. And we're back at the beginning. 
first thing I like to do, you know, right when I purchase and order the circuit board is make sure I have all the materials that I'm going to need. That way I don't get it like three quarters of the way put together and then you get to stop and order stuff. And yeah, just want to start it and finish it in the same, the same whack or whatever. You don't want to be interrupted. That's the point. Um, I have it on good authority that I already did that. Uh, I ordered this stuff probably two months ago, but that's what I usually do. So I assume I did that in this case. So a lot of these places that sell the circuit boards, um, they have a, a page or whatever that you can just blast all the materials you need at once to like um, DigiKey or a mouse or something and you'll get one of everything you need. Um, but if you think you're going to be building pedals as a career, I recommend, well, this is all my, uh, all my diodes. You can buy a, a box full of assorted diodes. I have a box like this full of resistors goes from zero ohms to like you know 50 uh, giga ohms and then uh, some uh, values are, are a lot more common than others and as you get low then you order those separately and then you go to uh, your favorite electronic supplier of choice and you'll just buy a box of what you need like 1k stuff like that one meg you know you get a box of like 500 for like 10 cents um, same thing with capacitors let me pull those out probably should have done this already all right, I dug out all my pedal making crap uh, from the warehouse. <laughs> I've made a pedal in a dog's age, so I had to uh, dig it all up. Um, sorry if there's any background noise, it's uh, raining again. What a filthy job. Could be worse. How? Could be raining. We're going through monsoon season here in the greater New England area. But anyway, so here's the, uh, the resistor kit I was telling you about. It's full of resistors, and as you can see, these are the ones that came with it, and the values I replaced over time as they were used. This is fairly inexpensive. I forget what it was, like 25, 30 bucks. Money well spent. Put that right there. Uh, hopefully you can see this. This is uh, mostly capacitors. And we got a box of trimmers that we're gonna need for this. It'll be fun. And um, probably a good place to start if you're just starting out and you think you're gonna do this for a little bit instead of buying each thing one at a time. Uh, grab these kits, make the investment. But here we go. Get the uh, electrolytics. Electrolytic kit comes with assorted values from 0.1 micro to a thousand mic. Wow, this will kill you. This will kill you. Probably not. Um, is your electrolytics? Um, and then it seems like the uh, the um, PCB makers are making their PCBs for these box capacitors, and you could basically get just about everything you need in two kits. Three kits, so we get two kits of box capacitors, 120 nano all the way up to, you know, 0.82 micro. I got more stuff kicking around, but just to give you an idea. Then we got these guys. Forget what they're called. Um, Polly, maybe. But we saw some examples of great mentoring, Ken. Yeah. And then some of these little guys here. These are a small value. These are the big boys for the amplifiers, so we don't need to see that. And then, uh, before I bought the uh, box capacitors, I was just using the, this kind here. And uh, buying what I needed. So as you can see, I built a few of these. And uh, this kind here, these are the ceramic disc. Let's see if we have a big one. Yeah, right here. Ceramic disc capacitors. So there you have it. And then you saw the diodes. Um, you'll see the shit as we build it. So let's move on to the next step. The very first thing that I like to do is go to the bill of materials, find the list of all the, the little components you're going to need. And I don't know if this is right for you or not, but this is right for me, so we're going to go this way. 
um, all your capacitors are our resistors go to your capacitor section and you see 37n 47n that's well, 39 nano 47 nano then you have 10 micro and it's gonna be a pico in here 680 pico what I like to do is uh, pull up a off camera on the interweb pull up a uh, capacitor value calculator converter and get these all into microfarads um, you know I'm an old man brain doesn't work I can't work with all these different values so what I'll do is I'll convert 39 nanos into whatever the micros is you know I don't care if there's 22 decimal points that's fine I work on amplifiers I think in micros and then I will also these things have um, codes and uh, well let's just do it and you'll, it'll make more sense so uh, pull up the capacitor code codulator capacitor value code calculator um, you can find this website by using your search function all right so 39 nano so there's a little box you type in 39 pull the drop down to nano and you calculate and it gives you the capacitor code so that is 393 Three, no, screw this pencil. Three, nine, three. And if we look, there's our nanos. There's the tuner. 39 nano, I think this is the right way for you. 39 nano, 393. And it will be written on the thing itself. You can read that 393 so we got the code now we just want to convert it into micros probably an unnecessary step but this is how I've been doing it from day one and if it ain't broke 393 enter three digit capacitor code press the calculate button BAM microfarads 0.039 0.039 and then uh, just go down Electrolytics, you probably don't need to do this. These big guys here, 100 micros. Um, but for consistency's sake and for the Hollywood video, we will. Um, and then, uh, well, yep, fill it all in. So I'm going to do that, do that off camera because that would be extremely boring. Even more boring than the rest of this video for you guys. All right, so if you see a value that's that reads like 3N3, just think of the N as a decimal point. So it's a 3.3 .3 nano. Uh, same thing with resistors. If you see like um, 1R5, that would be like a 1.5 resistor. All right, moving on. Okay, so I've converted all the values into micros and the capacitor codes written down here on my bill of materials. Um, I know a lot of you guys are smart and you can do the calculations in your head, but trust me, you know, it's easy to make a mistake. Once you've got a big giant circuit board full of components, you plug it in for the first time, all excited, ready to play some uh, David Gilmour licks, and it doesn't work, doesn't make any noise, or it just squeals like crazy. Yeah, you, you want to avoid that if at all possible. So that's why I do that, you know. Also, you, you build, and these things take a few hours to build. You know, your brain gets tired after a little while. Get tired, you just rush and you want to get it done, get it hooked up, get it playing. You know, you're liable to make mistakes. So we want to try to avoid mistakes wherever possible. So anyway, pro tip right there. All right, moving on. Alrighty, let me introduce some of the uh, materials we'll be using today to build our current lover slash uh, elect mistress slash... This is uh, a pedal I'm building, so I get to call it whatever I want. And around the uh, Church of the Tone Priest, we like our uh, religious motifs. So I think I'm going to call this Ezekiel's Wheel. Because Ezekiel saw wheels within wheels. This is kind of a flanger within a chorus, so I thought that was pretty clever. Um, anyway, uh, first and foremost, I'm going to need a soldering iron. My soldering iron of choice is not plugged in, so let me do that. Alright, 
soldering iron is plugged in, switch it on. My soldering iron of choice is a Hako FX888D. Um, if you're just getting into this, you don't need to buy a fancy soldering iron. Uh, just buy the cheapest one you can find on Amazon or wherever your online retailer of choice or a brick and mortar store. You know, the kind that just plugs straight into the wall and that's all you got. I, that's what I used for a while and it's totally fine. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, built plenty of pedals with those. It works. Um, but this is the business end of the Hako. Um, a lot of guys use Wellers. I'm not exactly sure why. They uh, don't like the Hakos. They say it doesn't get hot enough. Uh, I find that hard to believe. This has uh, five temperature presets. And let's see here. Temperature five is 454 degrees Celsius. So that's basically as hot as the center of the sun. It is a million degrees. Um, but for doing circuit board components, I put it on the lowest setting, which I believe is like 317 Celsius. Um, you can find a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter by using the search function on your Interweber. All right, next step. Solder, solder, solder. We call it solder around here. Uh, tin lead. Do not use the, well, the Tone Priest uses leaded solder. He recommends that nobody ever use lead ever. But the Tone Priest likes the leaded solder because it actually works. The, uh, the unleaded solder. You can trust your car to the man who wears the star. The big, bright, Texaco star. Unleaded regular solder. Um, sucks. Um, yeah, enough said. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a biohazard, obviously. Um, you don't want to be breathing in lead fumes. Shoes off. Oh, Brian, put yours back on me. Um, I got a little light on a little arm that you can adjust. It's got a little fan in it with some carbon filters. Unfortunately, I'm going to take one for the team. I won't be using that because it makes a bunch of noise, but I have all the doors and windows open. And we'll be mindful of the fumes. Um, also the lead, in addition to the lead, um, this has flux inside the solder to help with the soldering process, and uh, that's probably just as nasty as the lead. Um, that's basically like, you know, 100 year old concentrated ashtray ichor. Um, you don't want that in your lungs, so. Uh, we got some solder paste, or flux, sorry. Got some flux, that's what that looks like. Some uh, flux applicators. Um, yeah, that's all we'll need for now. That'll get us 90% uh, of the way there. So let's move on. All right, here's the enclosure I bought for the Aurora Mad Beans Petals Current Lover. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a lot of them. I got this specifically because I know this is going to take up a lot of space with all the junk in there. Bigger is always better until you get very proficient with building these things, which I am not. So let's crack this baby open. Need a tool. And this is probably the second most expensive part of this whole build. This is like 18 bucks. This is probably 10 or 12 bucks. Um, some pedals have integrated circuits. Um, that can be pricey. But, uh, I don't remember if that's the case with this one or not. And I like to use this. Well, you'll see why I like this as we build. But let's keep this guy handy. We'll put the enclosure off to the side. And um, what I like to do is, so components come of all different sizes. You know what a resistor looks like. It's kind of small. A lot of diodes are even smaller than that. But then you have your capacitors, which are taller in the Z height direction. Um, so we're like building a little city here. And what I like to do is start with the smallest ones first and build our way up. And uh, the reason why I do that will become apparent as we do it. So this is the top of the PCB with the printed side. And it's screen printed with all the values. 
So we're going to insert our components from this side up and then flip it over and solder on the back side. And then when we add the potentiometers and the switch, we're going to go from the opposite direction. We're going to go from the bottom down. So the pot, let me grab the pot, pot, give me some pot. Um, this will be on this side, not on this side, because then your knob will be, you know, in the opposite direction. The knob will be backwards. Ask me how I know. All right. Uh, another thing you can do if you're just starting out, you're not great at soldering. I'll show you how to solder properly as we do this. Um, you take a little bit of flux, apply it, and um, again, we're going from the top down. We're soldering the components on this side. You can just uh, just a tiny bit. You can uh, put a little bit of flux. That'll help you uh, get good adhesion. Uh, I don't really need to do this anymore because I'm fairly proficient at soldering now. Um, the only problem with that is it will make a mess and it'll be kind of gross, but uh, yeah, when she's all buttoned up, no one's going to know, so um, do it if you feel it's necessary. If you're having problems with cold solders or just having problems in general, maybe give that a whirl. Uh, you can clean it off with uh, like 99% ISO alcohol after the fact, but yeah, whatever. Basically, do whatever you need to do to get it done. Uh, that is something that one can do. Not that you should, because it's dangerous. Don't sue me. Alright, so let the fun begin. So, like I said, we want to start with the smallest components first, and that's usually diodes. So let's uh, pull out these diodes, see what they look like. And... So we need a 1N914. It's a very common diode. Just, if you're going to do this, get yourself a thousand pack of these. And as you can see, this is a very teeny tiny little component. So this is definitely a good place to start. Let's get these back in the bag. So 1N914. Put a little dot next to it. Know that we have uh, installed it. And we're going to look on the circuit board, see where this guy belongs. Um, sometimes it's hard to find on the circuit board, so you can pull up your, if I can find it, pull up this, it's got everything labeled. Um, but the name of this is D1, we're looking for D1 on here. D3 is over here. Searching, searching, seeking to destroy D2, getting closer. Searching, seeking to destroy. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? It's a mystery. Six and a half hours later. Uh Ah, found it. It's hiding next to this uh, integrated circuit. Okay. So. Um, what we want to do is we want to bend this, uh, bend the legs. Um, the resistors, pretty much, you don't need to make any adjustments. But uh, this guy is a little skinnier than a resistor. So we're going to leave a little bit of, you know, if you can see that. A little bit of extra space here. We're not going to... Super bend it. Let's get it in the hole. See how how she looks. All right, uh, diodes. Very important that they uh, these are polarized. They only work in one direction. That's basically kind of their function. They let current go in one direction. Um, there's other kinds of diodes that do different things, but this guy here. See how there's a little black line on this side? And then if you look at the little screen printed drawing, it's got a little line. So we want the line to line up with the line. I'm gonna stick it in the hole. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Push it all the way down. Perfect. And then this is why I got this guy here. So I can push that here. Uh, a lot of people, they, they like to bend the legs. I don't. I try to avoid that if possible. Um, it's just me. So, get our soldering iron. Let me show you what's going on here. So you guys can see that. Alright, so we got a wet sponge here. Um, 
a lot of guys use this after every time they do something. Uh, I, I try to avoid that because that's cold and wet. This is super hot, hot, cold, hot, cold. That kind of shocks the metal. It uh, can't be good for it. But, um, you know, if your tip's all gunked up, occasionally you just got to start from scratch and clean it up. Then we got the, uh, whatever this crap is called, chore boy. Um, I want to just kind of clean off your tip. And as you can see, it's already got some solder on there, but we can tin it. All right. And the reason you want to tin it is, if you will, to look at this on a microscopic level, the, the tip has a bunch of divots. It's not perfectly flat. And we're trying to spread heat around. And if it's got a little bit of, you know, very hot liquid flowing metal on there, That'll help spread the heat around the whole area you're trying to heat up. And the proper way to solder is we're not melting the solder. We're heating up the pad in the leg and introducing the solder to the hot pad and the hot leg. If the pad in the leg is not hot, this will not stick. It'll make you believe it's going to stick, but it will not. That's called cold solder. So, what I like to do, I kind of like to go... Not perfectly straight down, but a little bit of an angle. I want to touch the side of the leg while also touching the pad. Like so. Introduce the solder. And um, there she be. And when you're soldering, there's like a couple of stages. When it first starts to get hot, it'll melt. And then as it gets a little bit hotter, it'll get really watery. That's when you know you're good. Not just melted, but a little bit watery. And... Is, uh, you get a feel for it. You get good at, at it uh, after you've done it, you know, a thousand times. Um, but uh, I, you know, enough said. Figure it out. Oh, let's do the other one. Again, see, yeah, this is why I don't like to bend the legs. Um, touching the leg and the pad. Introduce the solder to the hot pad and hot leg. Melts. Watery. Pull it up. And when you're done, you should have a... I don't know if you can see that. A nice, shiny, Hershey Kiss looking thing. Go on the other side, make sure it's flat to the circuit board. It is. And then we're going to get a tool from my giant pile of tools. Here we are. Flush cutters. Uh, if you're going to do this for a while, get, you know, spend a couple bucks to get some nice flush cutters. Don't go to Harbor Freight for these. Um, anyway, and then the flush side down right at the top of the Hershey Kiss, clip, clip, you're done. And then rinse and repeat. So we're going to move on with the diodes, and then we're going to go to the resistors, and then we're going to go to the next biggest thing, next biggest thing, next biggest thing. So uh, that's the process, so I'll uh, give you some progress reports as we go along so you can see how it looks as it's being built. There is three quarters of the diode section done. Um, D4 or diode 4 is an LED which stands higher than uh, the resistor, so we'll come back to that one later. So number two and number three are done. Again, we were very careful to make sure that this was pointed in the right direction, lined up with the line on the diode, with the line on the circuit board. Um, just want to take your time and be very careful about how you do things. Uh, these things are a nightmare to troubleshoot. They don't work right. We like them to work right the first time. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I actually bumped up the Hako into intermediate mode. It's at 371 degrees. Um, this works better for me because I, I, I don't know, works better for me. <clears throat> if you're a beginner, maybe start at a lower temperature if that's a, an option of yours. But uh, it really doesn't matter. You'll you get the hang of it and you'll get a technique that works for you. So. Uh, move on to the resistors so with the resistors a lot of times there's multiples of the same value so like 5k6 which is 5.6 thousand ohms uh, here's another one and all right so we need two of these so I'll pull out two 5k6s and we'll do them both at the same time and then move down the list methodically so the first brain fart of the day here it's always important to read all the little notes here. 
Um, see here, R10. I, uh, I was putting in my 10K resistors, and for whatever reason, I had R10 stuck in my brain. Uh, i sorry, I'd already put something in R10, which, you know, I was supposed to because I already did the 82K. I was like, oh, what's that doing there? So I whipped it out, and then I realized my mistake, and then uh, had to put another 82K back in the hole. I was actually, R10 was, uh, the 10K was supposed to go in another spot. But anyway, turns out I got to pull out another 82K because I did not take the time to read this important note. Uh, this is going to be running on... Uh, 9 volt power supply and they're saying there's no need for a large resistor value there so we'll probably whip that out put a 1k in there they assure us it's fine so we'll take them at their word and uh, move on but uh almost done with the resistors getting there you see all that can you see that let's get a close up resistors so uh back at it okay so as previously discussed we're going to uh remove our 10 here um it was an 82K, and we're going to replace it with a 1K. So I'm going to use the solder sucker. Um, this uh, circuit board, it's got the uh, the through-hole pads, so I'm not really worried about ripping one of them out. Um, if it was like a tone pad circuit board, you'd probably either want to use a wick or, you know, uh, clamp your board into a set of helping hands and then just... Uh, heat the solder up and on the other side with a pair of tweezers just pull one leg out at a time and remove it that way but uh i'm gonna go with the solder sucker so i'm gonna hook uh camera back up to uh mr uh, tripod and i'll show you uh how it's done okay so we have mr solder sucker here the resistor we want to move is right here that's our 10. so what we need to do get our soldering iron out and even though we're removing solder still want to uh, have, you know, the tip of your soldering iron tinned. Get your solder sucker ready because uh, the solder uh, freezes very quickly. And um, when you're soldering, you really don't want to overheat the pads or the components. It's just bad for everybody involved, so less is more. So hopefully we can do this quick. And melt. Watery, stick your tip over there. No, nope, not fast enough. Try again. And there you have it. Sucks the solder right off. Let's do the other side now. This guy might be tough. Almost got it. And that should be pretty close. Let's see how we did. Yeah, she's a little tough because I this is the second time this thing's been soldered in there, so she's in there tough. So then we're going to go to plan B, which is, um, I'm just going to clip the leads. Clip. Clip. And uh, this is super professional, let me assure you. We're going to, this is going to get hot. Uh, we're going to poke. One lead through at a time, and it'll push the other one out. A little tin on there. Need in you. There we go. I do want to try to avoid overheating everything, which I'm failing at miserably. Oh god, this is a fucking nightmare. And there we are, all the resistors are in place. Resistance is futile. We got rid of that 82K, replaced it with a 1K as the important update advised us to. So the Tone Priest is going to go eat some lunch. After that we're going to come back and uh, hopefully finish this sucker up. Play some awesome rock and roll. Okay, after a brief intermission to allow the tone priest to have lunch because you know man does not live on bread alone but also apparently frozen microwave food uh we're back here with our mad bean pedals pcb clone called the uh what they call it current lover which is a clone of the electro harmonics 
um, Electric Mistress, probably the greatest guitar effects pedal ever made. Got some uh, funny bones thawing out a little bit here for dessert. And we're just chilling out, hanging out on a Sunday afternoon. Stop raining, which is nice. The temperature is just about perfect. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, other than the fact I gotta go back to the silly day job tomorrow. This is what you get when cars call Uber. But it's not a bad gig, can't complain. Pays for all these shenanigans uh, that we're getting into. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, so all the resistors are done. We're gonna move on to the, who are we gonna move on to? Next highest thing, tallest thing is probably some of the capacitors. We're gonna, I usually don't plan these out as much, so uh, I, I'm trying to get better at this. So I'm gonna try and plan it so that we do go smallest to largest in general. So capacitors, maybe the LED, um, get my pointer. The integrated circuits, I like to use sockets. Um, in case one fails, you can pop it out, pop a new one in, or a lot of times you can try different ones. Um, like a TL072, you can use any number of other different kinds of substitutes for that, so you can uh, experiment, get the best tone, and uh, get the trimmers. Yeah, it probably won't be perfectly smallest to tallest, but uh, at this point, you know, you know, we're on the home stretch here, so... Uh, We'll get to it. There you go. How do you like that glare from the light? All right, so after a little more thought, I'm not going to get crazy just strictly trying to go from smallest to tallest. Uh, if we have to bend legs, we have to bend legs. We'll, we'll get it done. It's not the end of the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to do all the capacitors. We're going to go from the um, lowest value to the highest value, and uh, we do all the electrolytic capacitors last. But um, from smallest to tallest, or from lowest to highest, it would be pico, then nano, then micro. And then uh, basically anything one microfarad and above is pretty much almost guaranteed to be an electrolytic capacitor. Those are the ones that look like little barrels. Um, oh, other thing I forgot to mention. Um, resistors, we use quarter watt resistors on effects pedals. Uh, if you use half watt, one watt, what's going to happen is they're bigger. And they're not going to fit. You're not going to have room to fit. Stuff's going to start getting all smashed together. And the legs, you're going to have to wrap around and come back. It's just a mess. So when you're buying your uh, resistors, make sure you get quarter watt resistors for your effects pedals. It's more than adequate. As if on cue, it's starting to rain again. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was looking at this board and getting my uh, capacitors out... Uh, where's my pointer? Pointer, where are you? There you are. Um, this circuit board looks to be designed for the polycaps, or uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I'll show you in a minute. But not the box capacitors. Uh, if this was designed for the box capacitors, where you see all the C13, C7, it would actually be like a rectangle here. And these would be wider apart. So... We're not going to use any of the box capacitors. We're going to use these guys right here, this style. Um, I think if you substitute, I really don't think there's a, an issue substituting one style for another. Um, this style capacitor is non-polar, so it doesn't matter which way you stick them in. But the electrolytics are, and uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. So, here we go. All right, I'll show you the first one. Get my pointer here. The lowest value capacitor is this guy right here. Where are you? 22 picofarads. So, uh, as discussed earlier, it's 0 0.000022 microfarads, and the code is 220. So we have our little capacitor here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Mm, probably not. Mm, there you go. It's imprinted with the code 220. That's the guy we want. And, uh, again, guys, just be very careful. Be very meticulous when you're doing this stuff. Um, like these guys here, 4K7. Um, be very careful you don't pull out, like, a 47K. See this guy's right here? It's very easy to be dyslexic and, you know, swap one value for the other. And, you know, some of these resistors are used to, like, bias the transistors. So you could get a big squealy mess or you can get low output or it just won't work at all. And, 
you'll be pulling your hair out trying to figure out what you did wrong. So be very careful. Take your time. Do it right. So let's uh, pop this sucker in. Just another quick thing here. So looking at the board, the, the silk screening. Where's my pointer? Come on, pointer. Um, see the circles around some of these capacitors? That indicates that it is a an electrolytic capacitor. And then you can see the square pad is for the positive lead. It's got a little plus sign under there. And then the circle pad is for the negative lead. On the um, capacitor itself, it'll have a band on it with a negative, but uh, I'll show you that when we get there. And then the other thing is, you would think once you start filling up all these holes, it would be easier to find where these things belong. I'm looking for C20, and I'm just... Oh, there you are. So, yeah. I'm going to have to hook up Mr. Tripod again, but yeah, he's, he needs to go in here. All right, let's hook up Mr. Tripod. All right. So C20. Goes into C20. Pop him in there, flip him over. Get ye old soldering iron. Where is ye old solder? Maybe the dog ate it. I wonder why he's been acting strange lately. No, 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 no. If that does that. <laughs> All right, clean the tip. Give it a little gunk. All right, and just like the resist, the same deal, just like everything. Heat up the the leg, heat up the pad. It melts. Give it another half a second. It gets watery. Done. And um, do enough of this, you, you get a, a technique. How quickly you push the solder in, how much to use, all that good stuff. It's kind of like working in four dimensions, but uh, it ain't rocket science. Although well, they do use this in rocket science, so career opportunity if you're really good at this. If she is, make sure she's flat with the bottom. If she is. Find out where the tone priest put his wire snippers. Clip the legs off at the top of the Hershey Kiss. Move on. Here we are with all the ceramic capacitors installed. Um, as you can see, I didn't have uh, these values, these particular values in the ceramic style capacitor. So I could have either chosen the closest value I had in this style, but what I opted to do was go with the box capacitors of the appropriate value. Um, I guarantee you there's no problem because uh, if you're watching this video, there's no problem. If there was a problem, you wouldn't be watching this, so it all works out in the end. Um, they do have one box capacitor here. This is a one microfarad. It's a non-polar capacitor. One micro is kind of a, relatively speaking, a big value in this application. Or, I don't know, big. I don't know how to explain it, but it's big for a non-polarized, non-electrolytic capacitor in this application. Um, I really don't know what the difference is between ceramic, poly, blah, 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 features, benefits of each, but here we are. So we got to get this, uh, one microfarad, uh, poly box in there, and then we're going to move on to the electrolytics. Uh, might actually hold off on that. Might put the, the sockets in first and maybe the, uh, transistors, if there are any. Yeah, there's got to be a couple. Yeah, there's two transistors in here. So we'll probably put the box in, put the sockets in, put the transistors in, go back in, put the electrolytics in, and then uh, we'll be uh, almost done with this beast. Stay tuned. I've got the uh, one micro box capacitor here, and as you can see, it's pretty tall. Can you see that? I can't see the viewfinder, but trust me, it's tall. So it, it sits high above the board. And again, we want to go lowest to highest because when we flip this over, we want to push all the components flush with the board. So... Anyway, there's, there's workarounds, but uh, so let's do the sockets, the uh, integrated circuit chip sockets. Uh, if you can see on here, uh, one end has a little round cutout, and if you look on your circuit board, there's a little cutout. That's to let you know which way to orient the chip when you install it. So, put this guy in there. And then what I like to do is push it flush, and I'll bend one pin on each corner. 
so it stays nice and flush. This really needs to be flush to the board because you're going to be pushing uh, chips in there and pulling them out. And so if it's raised above the, the surface of the board and you push a chip in, you might break the solder joints on this side. So we really need to, it's, it's super important for this. So we'll take our time to do this right. And uh, I'll show you what I do. So, tack one corner on, tack the other corner on, if you can. Alright, those are just tacked on. And now I'm going to push my thumb on one side, refill the solder. Oop, that's hot. That is really hot. And um, giving it pressure while the solder refreezes, we'll make sure it's flush to the bottom. And get the other corner. Flush at the bottom, melt it, push it, let it freeze, and you're good to go. And then you go and do the rest of the uh, the legs. This can be fun. These right here. Boop. Inhaling all this solder smoke for you guys. Normally I'd have my little filter fan on. I'm trying to keep the noise level down. I get mad as a hatter here any any day now. I guess back in the day, back in the Victorian times when uh, professional hat makers were making top hats, they used lead. I mean, who knew? Those must have been heavy hats. Maybe you should ask Slash about that. Heavy as the top hat that rests on the king's head. I think that's how that saying goes. Anyway, there you go. It's pretty sloppy. I was trying to show off and do uh, like rapid fire soldering because you guys are watching. Um, my reach has exceeded its grasp, obviously. But there you go. Uh, rinse and repeat. I'll do these. These come in a couple of styles. These uh, bigger ones have like um, flat legs. These other ones I have have round ones. They stand a little higher. I prefer these. These are nicer. See the nice round holes. It's easier to get the chips in there. Um, but these work. I get the job done. Alrighty. I think we're gonna install the trimmers next. We uh, need two 10Ks, a 100K, and a 50K trimmer. I don't have a 50K trimmer. I have a 47K trimmer, but I'm sure that'll be more than adequate. Usually when the engineers design these things, um, they they want the value that's in the middle of the range. So they're looking for like 25K plus or minus, you know, a little bit. So if we need that extra 3K on top, then something obviously went wrong somewhere. But I don't think that's going to be the case, especially since all the resistors, I believe, are plus or minus 1%. So we should be pretty tight. Um, so yeah, here's a trimmer. It's, it's the same thing as like a volume pot. It's a potentiometer or a variable resistor the more you turn it in one direction the more resistance you get so we get a 47k turn it one way all the way you get zero resistance turn it all the way the other way you got 47,000 ohms of resistance and uh, that's the common and then you get your other two legs so look it up online wikipedia google it do what you gotta do here we are with all the trimmers installed uh, once you get them installed, uh, just make sure you got full travel. Nothing got all cattywampus in the installation process. And then set them in the middle. That's where we'll start. Plus or minus, whatever. Uh, this guy's making me a little nervous. Uh, it's kind of a tight fit in there. Uh, well, yeah, I think it'll be alright. Just um, be careful when you're bending the legs because I think the common lead is uh, metal underneath the... Uh, the bottom of that blue housing and if you bend the legs too much one of the other legs might touch it and then you'll have a short and then it'll be defeating the purpose of having a trimmer in the first place but uh yeah that'll work next step all right so what i think i'm going to do next is install the transistors there's two of them a 2n3904 and a 2n5087 so here's my bag of transistors 
Uh, here's another trusty pro tip. Once you start getting a collection of all this junk, uh, go ahead and uh, I made a spreadsheet, uh, like an Excel spreadsheet, just to keep an inventory of all the different stuff that I have. That way you know how many you have. You know, if you have an upcoming project, you need 10, you know, TLO-72s, but you only have eight, you need to order some more. Or if you lose track of what you have, you don't order stuff that you don't actually need. Um, if you don't know how to make a spreadsheet, uh, do what I did and get a day job uh, doing a office administration work. Some assembly required. Damn. This one comes with a spare tire and some PVC piping. I hope those were important texts. You'll learn real quick. Anyway, so, uh, 3904-5087. See if we can find them. Five oh eight nine. Five oh eight eight. Getting closer. Another C. Five oh eight eight. That's how that happens. Thirty nine oh four. Five oh eight seven. We're in business. And uh you can also do a little, if you want to do some experimentation, you can go on the interweb and um, uh, find some stuff that's uh, alternative transistors for the one that is uh, in the schematic. It may uh, be a good thing, it may not, but something to experiment with. Uh, I know when I made the rat pedal, the transistors that were came in the original rat pedal are they aren't really made anymore so they were a little difficult to get so i used a substitute uh, but i eventually got the originals off of ebay and when i swapped them out i uh i found that i liked the uh the uh transistor classic better than the substitute so your mileage may vary but uh pop these guys in uh the other thing you want to do is if you're substituting, let me pull one of these out. 5087. This is Q2. Let's find Q2 on here. Q2. What is this guy? I'm missing a capacitor. We need to put him back in there. Um, you would think this would be easy to find by now. 12 seconds later. Ah, here we go. You got Q1 and Q2. If you see the silk screen, there's a circle with a flat spot, and the top of the transistor is a circle with a flat spot. So if you're using the ones that the schematic calls for, you uh, line it up. But if you're using a substitute, get the pin out. Um, usually the middle one is the base, and then you have uh, an emitter and the uh, the other thing. can't think of it at the moment. Collector. Um, if you're using a substitute, they might be reversed, and, and in if that's the case, then the flat spot would be opposite to the flat spot of the silk screen. Anyway, just like everything else, stick it in, flip it over, solder it, clip the legs off, move on. All right, we've gone back to the action cam. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, now it's time to do the, the electrolytic capacitors. So we get a nice kit here. So uh, the circuit board calls for three one microfarad capacitors. I've pulled them out. One, two, three. Now, the electrolytics are polarized, meaning there's a positive side and a negative side. You see that little strip right there? It's pointing to that leg right there. That's your negative. And if you look here, you get a long one and a short one. The long leg is the positive. The short leg is the negative. Very important. 
I don't know why it's that important. If that's a concern of yours, you can use the search function above. So here we are, and as described before, circuit board. I see the circle, like C5 right there. The square pad, it's got a little plus sign next to it. That's where the positive or the long leg goes, and then the circular pad, that's where the short leg or the leg with the minus sign and the bar pointing to it goes. And uh, that's about it. But um, also, just like, you know, you got a kit like this. You know, when nobody's looking, these guys like to jump around and hop into other bins. So it's always a good idea to just uh, read the value on the side. There's no secret codes on these. It just says, you know, one microfarad, if you can see it. Uh, that little, well, trust me, it does. Focus. Anyway. I'll just describe it to you. Uh, it says one, and then there's like a, a little cursive view on it. That little cursive view is Greek for micro, so one micro F farad. And uh, just confirm that these are the guys that, the, that we want, and I have already done that. So we're going to install these in the board and move on to the next step. We're getting near the end of the installation of our components here. And as you can see, these higher value um, electrolytic capacitors stand kind of tall above the circuit board. Now, we have a limited amount of space within the enclosure. So what I'm going to do here is um, just a, a little bit of planning. And there is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend them over to save space so we can get everything to stuffed fit inside the uh, enclosure. So I'll pop that guy out here. I'm going to do it off camera because I'm one-handed here. But, uh, and then just bend it over, and he's going to lay down on top of the resistors like that. And then this guy, he's got a whole landing pad right there for him to, to sit. And then uh, we got this guy here, 220. Where are you? There we are. 220 microfarad. He's wicked tall. So uh, we'll probably lay him down somewhere as well, if you can see it. There we go. Lay him down as well. And then this giant box, one microfarad box capacitor. We'll... Uh, See what we can do about him. Probably lay him down over these resistors right here. And then everybody will be happy and everything will fit inside the box. And that's just how we like it. We installed the first three uh, diodes already. And it's calling for a fourth LED diode, light emitted diode. And looking at the schematic, this pedal is going to have two LEDs in it. Um, the normal one where you click the button, turn the pedal on, and then the... The light turns on so you, you know the pedal's engaged so um, we are not going to directly solder that into the board we're going to use uh, wires into the board and then connect the led to the wires and uh, they'll be that will uh, become apparent why we do that shortly but uh then the other thing is the leds the led um I can get this in focus. So we have a square pad and a round pad. So that's to indicate the polarity. Um, as we saw earlier with the capacitors, the square pad was for the positive leg. Um, I've never built a Mad Bean pedal before, so the other pedals I've built, the square pad on LEDs was for the negative leg. But uh, we'll, we'll test it out. Um, what we can also do is we can um, follow the trace from the square pad to see where it goes, because if we look at the schematic, the positive side should go to a 4.7K resistor, so that should make it pretty apparent. And this is the symbol for LED. See the minus sign here? It's easy to remember. The minus sign is the minus side. And then the side opposite the triangle is the positive side. So we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Focus. Focus. There we go. Now it's time to start thinking about the offboard wiring here. So we got the jack. The LED power, 9 volt power plug, and input it and output jack. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, and of course, we have three pots here. Um, and a switch. So it calls for a double pull, double throw. So a double throw is one, two, two throws. It doesn't stop in the middle. And then double pull, it's got two separate, it's like two separate on off switches all in one package. So that's that guy. Got our double throw or triple throw, triple 
pole, double throw, foot switch. Um, before these were invented, you know, there were no effects. You just had, you know, you just had what you had. Got a selection of pots here. Um, again, I really don't care about aesthetics very much. Uh, I'm starting to now that I'm building more of them and getting a little bit better at it. Um, so in the beginning, I just bought the cheapest shit I could find on Amazon. Um, the problem with that is, you know, you start getting different heights of your knobs. It's going to look a little funky. And then you got knurled and you got flat and you got this style, you got this, you got this. So, you know, if you're going to do this uh, yourself, not that you should because it's dangerous as hell, but if one were to, um, this is what I'm going with now. This is what I like to use. Um, you'll see that on all these uh, board manufacturers make their boards for this kind where they mount directly to the board like so uh, which is fine absolutely fine uh, I recommend that um, put a piece of electrical tape or uh, like the new Gorva I don't know if they're new but the Gorva switches have a little piece of plastic here so that you know you're not shorting out all the components underneath it if it touches um, just uh, be mindful that when you drill out the holes on your enclosure, you better be spot on to make this thing all fit and work. And, uh, you know, see the switch in the pot may not be exactly the same height, but there is some travel. I mean, it's just, you know, black belt pedal making stuff, which, you know, I mean, I'm a pink belt, so here we are. Um, I prefer to just... Uh, connect wires to these and then solder the wires into the board that way I can put them anywhere I want I got tons of room I can screw up my holes when I'm screwing in the uh, drilling in the enclosure and it, in the end it's all gonna work and it may not look the prettiest thing in the world but it will work and uh, you know won't cause me much stress and then uh, the last piece here is the 9 volt power supply or power plug jack uh, there's three leads, this big one here, the L-shaped one, that's your negative. This guy on top, uh, that's for the battery. This guy here is for whatever's, you know, coming in here. Um, thanks to Boss, everything is center negative. So the center of the barrel of your plug is going to go to this, this lead right here. Uh, and that's how we want to do it. And um, I believe, I can't confirm this with experience because I've never used a battery, because why bother? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Um, if you have your battery connected here and you have your hot for your, your 9 volt uh, pedal power supply right here, um, it'll run on battery until it's plugged in and then it'll shut the battery, it'll shut this lead off, but we don't use batteries so we can go ahead and... See you later. And there you have it. I have another style of this guy. Let me see if I can find him real quick. Um, I originally was using this style here, and it's nice because it sits flush with the, you know, the enclosure, and it looks neat. The only problem with that is, is once you solder the leads on, it's stuck in the hole forever. You can't pull the guts out without unsoldering. The leads from this. The alternative was this kind that comes in from the inside and screws tight from the outside. That way if you need to get the guts out to do troubleshooting or whatever, you can pull it out without having to unsolder the leads from the, your, your power plug. Um, the downside of that is, is it sticks out like a sore thumb. But again, we're already having cattywampus knobs and stuff, so not a problem as long as it works. As long as it sounds awesome, commandment one has been obeyed. So I'll show you how I go ahead and add these leads to the pots. Um, get three pieces of 22 gauge stranded wire here. It's like three, four inches long each. Strip a little bit off. With the assistance of the helping hands here. We'll get this done. Go ahead and tin this. Tin the leads. 
lead. Hopefully you can see that. And I uh, use my little um, round needle nose to curl the uh, leads of the pot back. Make a little J connection. Best we can. Doesn't need to be great. This once this thing's done, it ain't going nowhere. Um, stick this guy right here. Again, we don't want to melt solder and blob it on there. We want to heat up the wire. We want to heat up the two things that we're connecting and then introduce the solder to it. Now you may see me stick the solder onto the tip, but that's only to tin it and to get it started. We want to make sure everything's hot or else it will not work. And you'll see the solder melt. And as it gets a little bit hotter, you'll see it get watery. That's when you know you're good. Now, uh, this takes, because of the, there's more metal here, it takes a little bit longer to cool off. So, unlike when you're doing resistors, it can almost instantly go ahead and clip the, uh, the leads off. Just give this a couple extra seconds before it, before you do anything to let it, allow it to freeze. And there you have it. Do that two more times and, yeah, she ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. Rinse and repeat. We got, uh, three, six, seven, eight more leads to do before the next step. Here we are with our pots all wired up, looking pretty, ready to be connected to the printed circuit board. Uh, if we look at the instruction manual, the destruction manual, um, we'll see that it's 100 KB. So what that means, it's uh, 100,000 ohms B, which is just a regular plain old B, is plain old, plain Jane, volume pot, potential oven, or whatever you want to call it. 10 KB, same deal, 10,000 ohms. And then we have one MC, so that's a one meg pot. C, well, let's start with A. If it was like a 100 K A, that would be an audio taper. Meaning, if you turned it halfway up, you'd only have, it would only be doing them like, whatever, 10% of the resistance. So it's slow, 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 faster, faster, and you get most of the range all at once at the end. It's logarithmic. I don't know, figure it out. Um, a C pot is the is an audio pot, but there's a foot switch all wired up. I guess now is a good a time as any to talk about the type of wire to choose. Uh, for this, I use 22 gauge wire. And I use stranded wire for the most part. If this is a uh, if you're getting into this, think about thinking about doing this yourself. Um, and you don't have a lot of experience with this kind of thing, with soldering. I would recommend you go ahead and get a kit, like one of these things, multi-kit of wire, but um, get solid wire because it'll make the soldering and the connecting of the wire a lot easier. Um, I used stranded wire because I'm able to get the connections. Uh, good enough. I don't mind putting in a little more effort here But with the stranded wire, it's more flexible and the uh, I have bigger problems getting all the stuff to fit inside the enclosure Because you're basically putting 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag And I like it to be more flexible and uh, The other problem with the solid wire is as you're moving all the crap around trying to stuff it in the box uh, you might pop off a, a solder connection if it's insecure. Um, the difficulties with the stranded wire is when you stick it through these tiny little holes, where's my pointer? When you stick it through these tiny little holes in the back of the foot switch, the uh, strands kind of splay out like crazy, like a crazy metal afro. And all it takes is one single strand that it's microscopic, it's invisible to see. Um, shorting one pole to another pole and it'll just screw everything up and you'll go nuts trying to figure out what the heck's wrong with your pedal but um so i'm just very careful about that to make sure there's uh that's not an issue and uh there you have it pros and cons for everything now we're going to wire up the input and output jack um so we want mono jack so there's only two connectors here 
um, if you look at this connector here you can follow it under the yeah I need three hands you can follow the connector it goes underneath the the circle sandwich thingy and it's connected to the tip that's going to be your hot and then the sleeve is this other connector here you can tell it's a sleeve because it the sleeve is going to touch this metal ring which is connected to this it's all one piece um, the drawing calls for different colors uh, I'm gonna make the sleeve black because it's a ground so uh, black is ground and then um, from day one kind of arbitrary I've always done the the input jack is yellow and the output jack is blue um, if we look at the board here where's the board um, is where the other ends are gonna go so s for sleeve T for tip sleeve tip for jack 2 and we got uh, jack 1 input jack 2 output so black yellow black blue and um, now's about the time well not quite the time yet it'll be time in a minute and we'll talk about it when that time comes see you in a minute I forgot to mention here um, see some of these connections jumper in from pole to pole uh, if uh, you have it I do have it uh, for these jumpers I use solid wire so we got one here and uh, I just cut the insulation right here so this is all bare exposed wire to connect it here and then passed it through here J hook around this guy here and solder 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 with this guy being stranded um, and this guy the same way um, I can show you over here possibly if I can figure out how to operate a camera same thing get a little melted but the insulation is fine um, that jumper is solid wire but the other yellow wire is stranded um, ran out of black stranded wire so that black wire is solid but we'll live um, so I'd like to continue using stranded wire on these things here in the power plug so what we're going to use is a white wire instead of black. Normally, I would suggest you don't get all willy-nilly with the uh, color codes. But it's going to be painfully obvious where these wires are going to and from. So it shouldn't be an issue. And, you know, if you can't have black, you may, may as well have white for a ground. Um, the same thing we're using. I'm using this guy. So it's also time to start thinking about how this stuff's going to lay out in the, in the enclosure. So these wires don't need to be huge, three inches is enough, because you know where that's going to be, you know where the, the circuit board's going to be. But the jacks, when you're putting, cutting your wire for the jacks, you know, leave yourself plenty of room. Because uh, you'll see when we start assembling this thing, um, where everything goes so that everything fits and nothing's touching and it all works out, it starts to become an issue. So leave yourself plenty of room, that way you'll have more options. Um, so your input output jack and your 9 volt power plug. So I'm going to wire up the grounds on the jacks, wire up the power plug, and then uh, we're going to start getting down to uh, the nitty gritty. Hang tight. Alright, so I got all the wires on uh, the pots, the jacks, power plug. I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this directly to the board. I think we can get one hole in the enclosure to line up, and this has got a pretty big uh, sleeve or neck, whatever you want to call it, so uh, I think we can make it work. Um, again, when you're doing this stuff, all the components, let's put this, okay, this is the top of the pedal right here, all your components are going to be facing the ground. So, that means this guy, let me not look through the viewfinder, this guy is going to be on this side of the board. I guess you'd call this the bottom of the board, but in this position it's the top, top, bottom, bottom, top, who knows. Uh, also the pots are going to be on this side of the board. Ooh, is that somebody at the door? We're using the template as a guide to kind of figure out how we're going to put this all together. And so we're cutting our wire lengths to try and reduce the amount of uh, excess wire that we got to bundle up inside there. Um, remember that this is upside down, you know, you want your input jack on the right, so right is left and left is right when it's upside down. But uh, jack one here, the one on the left, is for the input, jack two, sorry for my finger. Uh, 
Uh, Jack 2 is for the output. So this guy needs to travel a little bit further. So we left the uh, leads a little bit longer. And um, more is less on these. Or more is more. Whatever. Um, it's usually pretty easy to stuff some extra wire in there. But you can't stretch wire out. And it's a pain in the ass to unsolder and resolder wires on. So uh, that's the, the pro tip of the minute. And then, see this guy, the lilies are a little bit shorter, and this guy will be going over here. And then, um, looks like the power, yeah, that's where the power connection is, so these leads are, you know, obviously way too long. So, let's trim those up, get the pots on there, plug this in, and try this bad boy out. Stay tuned. Don't change the channel. Okay, very important to pay attention here if you don't want your knobs to work backwards, like the first handful of pedals I made. Uh, so we're on the bottom of the board, and now these are made for this kind of surface mount pot, and they would uh, be attached like this. All right, so when we install our pots with the wires on them, we're just going to do the same kind of idea, like that. All right, altar boys and girls of the Church of the Tone Priest, we are back. It is a brand new day. Just got back from my silly day job. Busy, busy, busy. Evil Knievel would have a blast in this place. Gonna be the most dangerous three acres on earth right here. Which is an unfortunate reality right now. Gotta pay the bills. Uh, which reminds me. <coughs> mm, pardon me. Orange juice. Which reminds me. The uh, Tone Priest channel has set a new goal. We'd like to double the number of subscribers to the channel by the end of the month. Uh, I think if we set this goal and... Uh, Continuing that forward momentum, we'll be well on our way to getting that sweet, sweet YouTube ad revenue. So help us out. We uh, want to double the number of subscribers by the end of the month. So uh, we're going to need two subscribers by the end of the month. Yeah, this one subscriber business is getting pretty uh, embarrassing. Especially since it's my mom. It's bad enough I live in her basement. But anyway... Enough about that. So we're back here. We're building a clone of an electroharmonics. Uh, whatchamacallit. I forget the name of it. Electric Mistress. What would be cooler than that? An Electric Mistress. Sounds like something uh, the guy from the cult would have. Um, PCB is made by Mad Bean Pedals. They call it the current lover. I'm going to call it Ezekiel's Wheel when I'm done. So, uh, where we left off yesterday, we were uh, attaching all the off-board wiring. So, the foot switch, um, input and output jack, the pots, the, yeah, focus, stay in frame, the pots, the 9-volt power plug, and also the two LEDs, the, um, Jesus, I need to pay attention, the uh, on-off LED and then this other LED um, that kind of shows you the rate at which you're flanging, flangular, flangulating, flangiating. All right, and so once you get all those in, you're just about done. A um, couple of things to look out for if you're new to this. Not that you should be doing this because this is dangerous, but in a world without lawyers, if you were doing this, um, a lot of times I forget, I just go by the bill of materials and I do all the resistors, all the capacitors, all the ICs. And then I forget, oh yeah, there's jumpers too. Um, so you got to make sure this guy here, let me get my pointer out. This guy here, that's a jumper, that needs to be there. If that's not there, that ain't going to work. This section is for, um, if you want to use the, uh, whatchamacallit, the effects loop, which we're not going to use. We're going to keep it simple. No battery, no effects loop, just plug and go. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? All right, so once you get all your outboard wiring on, you need to socket all of your chips. Chip, 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 chip. 
make sure they're oriented in the correct way. And if you see, let me get a close-in shot here. On these chips, we have this little uh, circular indentation. Um, and that is indicated on the um, silk screening on the circuit board where that should be. And then also on the little socket itself, it has a little thing right there. So you'll know which way this is supposed to be oriented. Um, if it doesn't have one of those right here, um, if you look at the writing, um, underneath the writing to the left, that's pin one. Right there, that's guy right here. One, two, three, four. Goes around in a circle. Five, six, seven, eight. So you want to make sure those are in the right way. Um, usually the through holes through the PCB will be circular, but pin one will be square. Or at least that's how it's been in all the, uh, the builds that I made. So you get that all fired up, and then the next thing to do is to uh, plug it all in and try it out. Uh, which we will do shortly. Um, or maybe not. I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but you'll hear it. Hang tight. Be patient. All good things. Um... So you plug it all in, plug your guitar in, plug your guitar out, plug your 9 volts in, fire it up, press the foot switch, nothing happens. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do is you don't panic. It has the words, don't panic, printed in large, friendly letters on its cover. Don't be panicking. Um, a lot of times these things have little problems, and the main problems are, well, this one here, I already uh, fired it up last night. Um, I didn't film it. Uh, it's probably a good thing because it wasn't working right off the bat. Oh, is there someone at the door? Is there someone at the door? Let me go check. After that silliness. Um, where were we? Oh, yeah, we were panicking. Um... A lot of times, if these things, if you were very careful and followed all of my advice, and you did things methodically, and you were very careful about, you know, making sure, making sure all your components, right values, went into the right hole, blah, 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 and you followed proper technique for soldering, um, then some very common problems happen. Uh, a lot of times, like if you use stranded wire here, on the back of this, there might be like one little teeny tiny strand bridging two terminals. That could be a problem. Um, same thing on this side. If you get a bunch of flux everywhere um, and you're using the solder sucker, you know, microscopic particles of the uh, solder can get in the flux. And, you know, if there's a big blob connecting two close terminals, the flux with the uh, solder particles could become conductive and that could bridge a couple of terminals. Um, the back of your PCB is a big mess. You can get like a, tooth, a soft toothbrush and some. Uh, 99% ISO alcohol and just give it a good brush and uh, just make sure the uh, alcohol evaporates before you use it. Uh, other things to look out for if it's not working, check uh, the back side. Um, if you're looking back here, it'll be easy to see if you missed any components. Um, check to make sure that uh, there's no cold, cold solders and that something's you know loose. Um, a couple problems I had, there, there were two things that were stopping this one from working right off the bat. Um, I actually socketed two of these, one here and one here, and they're both different chips. And I think the Tone Priest was uh, sipping a little too much communion wine when he did that, but uh, that was the first problem, obviously. And it's pretty retarded because, you know, this chip has two extra legs on it, but uh, we won't mention that to anyone. And the second problem is uh, this guy right here, this MN3007. This is a Bucket Brigade chip. These chips are the old school delay chips. Um, they're not made anymore. It, you basically can't get any new ones anymore. If you do, it should probably, you know, it'll probably be from a museum or something. That does not necessarily compute. So these are, um, you buy these on the used market and there's a lot of counterfeits. I purchased a batch off of eBay or Amazon. Um, it was coming from China. It was a, they were really inexpensive, and I figured, well, they're likely counterfeit or broken, but the price was it was like, you know, whatever. It was worth a chance, you know, risk reward. And I thought I had already used one in another build, and it worked. 
but I, I'm not quite sure. But regardless, I tried two different chips, and then um, checking voltages, and the voltages, you know, a lot of them were close, but a couple of the legs just weren't quite right. So I pulled this chip out of another uh, build, and I popped this in. As soon as I did, it fired right up. So uh, I hope those tips help people out there if they're having problems, because uh, I know that the one thing that I hate more than anything is troubleshooting. I absolutely abhor troubleshooting. So what I think I'm going to do now is uh, off camera, um, you know, just cut all the holes in the enclosure here. i going to put it this way, put it in landscape mode. Uh, cut all the holes in the uh, enclosure and put it together so we can, uh, I'm sure this video is already super long right now, uh, but this is basic building stuff. You can, you know, learn how to use a drill, but a couple of tips, just kind of before you start drilling, I mean, use the template. I never use a template because, I don't know, I guess I like doing things the hard way. But um, just kind of eyeball it. And um, when you're lining stuff up, and, and before you drill, measure twice, cut once. Um, always give yourself a little bit of extra space on the side, especially like on the split switch. Because if you'll notice the, the edge of the enclosure, where's my hand? There you are. Um, is at an angle a little bit. So if you make this guy flush with the bottom, it's not going to fit because it gets, you know, there's less room down here on the bottom than there is, well, the top, I guess, the top of the bottom or the bottom of the top. You know what I mean. Measure twice, cut once, and then, um, yeah, you see, you see how the finished product when I'm done, and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll fire it up. We'll do a demo, and uh, it'll be awesome. And then we'll move on to the, the next project in the next video, which will be even more awesomer. Here she is, Ezekiel's wheel. That's what a pedal is. So we'll see in about eh, half an hour or so, and we'll be done. Good times. And here we are all put together. I don't have the knobs on yet. I'm not going to tighten everything down and knob it up and finish it until uh, we know that it works and everything. Um, Only one little mistake I made, uh, I think I mentioned uh, when we were building this, that I, uh, the reason why I don't get the surface mount pots and stuff is because it gives me more, op more options and more flexibility and room for error. And uh, if you remember, this uh, switch was surface mounted in, in my haste to get this together. Um, I forgot about that. I was going to have knob, knob, knob. And then uh, I drilled the pilot holes for these, and then I remembered, oh shit, this guy here. But uh, it worked out all right. We can put the light up here in that hole, and yeah, it'll be fine. Um, and I did this very quickly. You know, I'm capable of making them look nice. But uh, usually when I get to this point, I, I personally don't really care about the form. I'm more interested in the function, but I am capable of actually making them look good. But uh, first things first, as they say. But um, time's limited right now. We're in the middle of the week. Got the old stupid day job. So I want to get this video up there and get on to the next project. So uh, that's what it looks like on the inside. Um, just another thing, when you're putting all this crap together, like the, the bottom of the, the volume pots are made of metal. So I put a piece of electrical tape on there because, you know, you don't want the the pots, the metal of the pots to touch up to the bottom of the circuit board and, you know, bridge all the components. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be awful. But, uh... Let's fire her up and get a demo. All right, one more thing before we get to the demo. Uh, I think I'm going to be using this in the demo. This is a pedal I made for a friend of mine. As you can see, it's a little bit nicer. Um, you can get the pre-painted boxes. They're, uh, you know, a little bit nicer than the plain Jane silver ones. So this guy here is a clone of an Earthquaker device's Ghost Echo 2. With the fancy op amps. Ooh. Um, personally, I can't hear a difference. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. Uh, but we spent the money. We got the good stuff. Um, since the Electric Mistress is uh, mo probably most noted uh, being used by David Gilmore, I'm going to whip out my um, the two Pink Floyd licks that I know or riffs that I know the demo and uh, you can't do uh, Pink Floyd without a little bit of reverb and delay so I'll probably add this and this together other than that we'll be going uh, straight into the amp.
with just these two effects. Uh, yes, yeah, this, this guy's pretty nice. It's a good pedal. Highly recommend it. I got the, I believe I got the PCB from uh, pedalpcb.com. Hey everybody, it's the Tone Priest from the future here. So when I went to do the demo of the pedal, um, I ran into a bunch of problems and issues. Um, the uh, Electric Mistress clone here is a, it's a pretty complicated pedal. Um, there is a calibration, um, a bunch of steps for calibration on this thing to get it up and running properly. Um, I was also having uh, issues with the acoustic G60T. Um, when I plugged the guitar into the high jack, it's, if I hit the strings too hard, it went into a wicked oscillation, and it was howling like a banshee. Uh, at first, I thought it was a problem with the pedal, and I was just getting frustrated, and then, uh, well, excuse, 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 whatever. Um, it's a very cool pedal. I want to do a proper demo. Uh, I think that's going to be the subject of the next video. I think we're going to um, pull out a different amplifier. Uh, I don't like the speaker that's in it, so I think we're going to do a uh, video where we replace the speaker that's in it with a new one, with a nice eminence we have. Um, so we'll showcase that along with the pedal, as having it all calibrated right, and just take the time to mic it up properly and spend you know a few minutes in Reaper to make it sound good. But uh, I'll add a couple of clips from the uh, camera video, um, you know, just to you know, just to do it because we can. But uh, so stay tuned for that, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the the video and maybe learned something, or you know, uh, if you know all the lawyers of the world drop dead, and you know, maybe you can try and build your own pedal. You know, it's fun, it's cost effective. You know, well, get something better to do. You need to go on Twitter all day. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, all right, I'm going back to the past. Here we go. All right, it's demo time. Hope you guys can see all the knobs and stuff. Uh, as promised, I've got the um, Ghost Echo clone over here. Um, when this is on, I'll turn the reverb off the, the amplifier. <laughs> When this is off, we'll use the amplifier's reverb. Got Reaper fired up. Please forgive the horrible guitar playing. We're doing the best we can. But uh, hopefully you get an idea what this pedal sounds like. So, here we go. Here's the clean. Thank you. 
right, guys. So uh, I know that was kind of a crappy demo. I was running into some technical difficulties. Um, this particular pedal, if you, if you remember the four trimmers in there, um, I was in there off camera tweaking. Um, you really got to fiddle with those to get everything just right to try and get the most of, amount of effect while eliminating uh, as much noise as possible. Because if you don't have them set just right, you might get some oscillation or some distortion. Or you might, um, you'll hear the clock ticking uh, as it's flanging. You'll hear tick, 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 tick. So I was messing with that. And then uh, also my, um, the amplifier. Uh, I just recently bought that. And that thing's been sitting in a basement for like 20 years. I haven't serviced it yet. And I can, uh, I can smell the, the filter caps starting to cook. It's a very distinct smell. Um, but, you know, hopefully you get an idea. Hopefully this helped peop some people out get an idea on how to do these things. It's not really rocket science. And um, hopefully you got a little bit of an idea of what the, uh, the Mad Bean Pedals uh, current, leveler, current lover uh, electric mistress clone sounds like. Uh, hopefully through all my horrible guitar playing. But uh, I'll edit it and make myself sound as good as humanly possible. And other than that, rock on dudes and dudettes. Done.